Good morning and welcome to Garden Prairie United Church of Christ for April 18th, 2021, which is the third Sunday of Easter. My name is Bob Black and I'm going to be covering this week for Pastor Dina and we're looking forward to having you in the service. One of the advantages of us videotaping the services and presenting them to you this way is all the extra information we get to give you. So please make sure to check below this video in the description area. And there are some links to some things I mentioned during the sermon that I hope you'll find informative and inspiring. Let's open with a word of prayer. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witness to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses." And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer, repent, Therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And now join me for Psalm 148. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words, and seek after lies. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Our gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Greetings from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're just about in the middle of our celebration of Easter and the resurrection. It began on Easter Sunday and extends 40 days to 
Ascension Sunday. Our scriptures share stories of what Jesus did during the 40 days he experienced and lived after the resurrection. That's right, after the resurrection, Jesus was with his disciples and here on earth just for another 40 days, just over a month to wrap everything up. The older I get, the, the, the more I realize how short a time 40 days is. 40 days would fly by. But Jesus didn't leave this work with someone else to finish. He left the work with us to finish. The stories from these 40 days after the resurrection are just weirder, just weird and different from the stories we're used to in the Gospels, the story of Jesus' life before the crucifixion and resurrection. The Jesus who was crucified walked on his feet. He had sandals. He ate. He got tired and he slept. He went to parties and he had friends and he cried when they passed. This Jesus was someone we could touch, someone we could relate to. And I do relate to him. His experiences, his human experiences, are often universal things that have happened to all of us and still have resonance with us today. All of those things seem relatable in that Jesus. But after the crucifixion and after the resurrection, Jesus seems to do things differently. He talks to people but keeps them from recognizing him. He appears to groups, groups of people seemingly having passed through locked doors and has to right away say to them, I'm not a ghost. Where he is when he's not appearing to his followers isn't discussed. We don't have stories of where he slept or, or where he spent his time. He simply appeared to them and said something or performed a miracle and then he was gone. He doesn't seem to be the same relatable person, doesn't seem to be the same human that left for three days and then came back. He seems to have changed somehow in his nature, in his way of doing things. And I'll admit that is something that I've struggled with throughout this, this life as a Christian. Why is this Jesus who comes back so different from the one who left? Uh, and there are a lot of explanations, and it's something that's hotly debated. Now, the learning about the nature of Christ is some heady territory. This is some deep philosophical and theological talk. It's often debated as much as it's learned in seminary classrooms. Theologians going back for nearly 2,000 years have written volumes about the nature of Christ, and in fact, wars have been fought over it. This is a deep debate that often winds up with men and women sharing esoteric points and attempting to find analogies that always fall short. Today, particularly in the United Church of Christ, but across across Protestantism, we accept an, ex an explanation of Christ as having a dual nature. This dual nature is something we're taught sort of indirectly. It permeates our understanding now, even though we may have never directly been taught it. But for over a thousand years, it was a concept that Christians really struggled with. Jesus is fully human, just like you and me. And Jesus is fully divine one with God, and present from the time of creation. Both are true at exactly the same time and at all times. The two Christs, human and divine, are inseparable. This isn't just academic. It matters to us, and we're going to talk about why. There are things we learn from this dual nature that deepen our faith and help us in our everyday life. In both last week's and this week's gospel readings, Jesus appears to disciples who had locked themselves away. They were hiding in fear, hiding in despair. They despaired that the Jesus they loved, the one they had abandoned their lives and livelihoods to follow, was now gone. There was no clear path forward for them. They were sad, but in the most profound sense of that word, and they were lost. In addition to this profound mourning that the disciples were experiencing, they were in fear, and rightly so. The crowd had turned on Jesus. The authorities saw both him and his followers as a dangerous element. People were looking for them, and the disciples knew that if they were found, it would not end well. Most certainly in prison, and possibly in death. In the midst of this, Jesus ignores the heavy door they had locked themselves behind and appeared to them. And in this, the worst time in their lives, when everything had gone wrong, he found a way to reassure them. 
and he teaches them. Imagine your darkest moment. Sometimes we are so far down in the pit of despair that no human voice can reach us. It is in these moments that only the divine Christ can reach us and comfort us. The disciples experienced this, and I bet most of us have too. After greeting the disciples, the scripture records that he showed them the scars on his hands and feet as proof that he was who he said he was. It's strange, it seems strange to me that just seeing and hearing him weren't enough proof for them. My dad has had a bypass operation, but he doesn't have to show me his scar. I know who he is, and I can recognize him even from a distance. Perhaps being shown the scars, though, was part of the teaching. One of my favorite preachers and authors, Nadia Bowles Weber, began using a phrase on her social media during this time of Easter. She says, Resurrection is not reversal. That's a pretty succinct statement. It's just four words. It's easy to make into a meme. It's easy to share. It's perfect for the time we live in with Facebook and Instagram, and that's exactly where I saw it from her. But it's pretty full of meaning. Resurrection is not reversal. After posting these memes and leaving them just hang for a few days, Nadia decided to let everyone off the hook and discuss this phrase on her podcast and in the context of the scripture that we heard today. Obviously, being raised from the dead was a pretty spectacular event. No one actually saw it. The women just found an actual tomb. The actual moment of resurrection is not something that anyone witnessed. I'm sure it was awesome. Even thinking of it makes me a little teary. It's, it's foundational to our faith, and it's why we're here today. That resurrection led us to this place today. And yet, even after this spectacular event of being raised from the dead, Jesus had scars to show his disciples. I would have thought that the divine factory refurbishment would have simply erased the signs of having been tortured and crucified. Instead, Jesus was left with them. Jesus was left with these scars. And then there's that dual nature again. The divine Christ who reaches us in our darkest times and the human Christ who bears our pain with us and shows the very marks on his skin. Resurrection is not reversal. We need both Christs to fully experience him and to live out our faith. The divine Christ calls us and the human Christ who walks with us and shares our scars. Our scars don't keep us from a fuller life with Christ. In fact, our Christ had them too. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding be with you all on this day. We walk by faith and not by sight With gracious words draw near O Christ who spoke as none ever spoke My peace be going to say together the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, 
who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our prayers for the day. Mother and Father God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that our gathering, whether it be in person or in a virtual world, embodies the repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Protect our waterways, especially the Rock and Kishwaukee River watersheds that feed the land we rely on. Provide all the inhabitants of earth with a peaceful and sustainable home. Cover your hands and protect all those who work to provide our food by working the earth, especially in this new season. Grant the power of your peace to the nations of the world. Halt all impulses toward violence between nations in our city streets and inside our homes. Lead our government into wise decisions concerning migrants, especially youth. Bring an end to ethnic prejudice in our land and guide judges and juries to enact justice throughout each court proceeding. Grant the well-being of your peace to all who suffer. Visit all who are ill, especially those suffering from COVID-19, those without access to the vaccines, and those with strained medical resources. Comfort with your merciful presence those who are distanced from family and friends and all who are lonely or distressed. We praise you for embracing your people with the wounded arms of Christ, and we bless you for all who died in the faith. At the end of all things, bring us with them into your everlasting peace. We ask these things in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant us a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Thank you.